Hello everyone and welcome to this video. You've probably already seen a 3D object inspection system in a video game before, maybe even in some of your favorite games. This feature gives the illusion of holding an object in your hands, allowing you to inspect it in details. In a game like Counter-Strike or Valorant, it may not have much purpose beyond admiring every pixel of your weapon. However, in a game like Resident Evil, object inspection can give you clues about where to go or even help you retrieve another hidden object within the first. So today I'm going to show you how to set up a free object inspection system in Unity, like the one you see on the screen. You'll then be able to easily extend it and adapt it to your needs. So here we are in a brand new scene in a URP project. For today's tutorial this doesn't really matter, but I'm mentioning it just in case. In this default scene I already have a main camera, so let's configure it. If I switch to the game tab we can see the view from this camera. I'll change the background type to solid color and set this color to white, which will be more comfortable for inspecting an object. Next, let's integrate the object to inspect into our scene. I downloaded a small pack of objects and I'm going to reuse the exact same example I used in the introduction with the axe inspection. I can drag and drop this object onto the main camera and in the transform section here, I click on the three dots, select reset, Let's switch back to the game view and move this object slightly onto the Z axis. So it appears in front of the camera's view. And then let's slightly change the object positions for the better. Now we just need to set up the technical system that will allow us to grab and rotate this object in all directions. Let's quickly tidy up the structure in our hierarchy. So let's move the axe out of the main camera to make it independent. Since pivot points can be a bit tricky in Unity, I recommend changing the mode to center on this icon. Then select your object, press F to focus it, and the object gizmo, so the three arrows here, should appear right at the center of the object. Now let's create an empty object. Place it at the exact same position and rename it to inspect object. Finally, drag your object into this empty object. This way, the central point of the object will always stay in the middle, which will make the rotations smoother later on. All right, let's move on to the technical part. We can add a script inspect system onto our camera and open it. We'll only need the void update for now. You can also remove the system collections as well. Let's set up some variables. First, we need a reference to the object we want to inspect. So we'll create a transform called object to inspect. We'll also need to apply rotations to this object. So we can create a float variable called rotation speed, which you can set up to 100 units by default. The system will be quite simple. We need to capture the mouse's position when we click to grab the object and we start rotating it. Then in real time, in the void update, we'll track how much and in which direction the mouse moves. And we'll apply that movement to rotate the object in a 3D space. It might sound complicated in theory, but in practice it's quite straightforward. We'll need an additional variable of type vector3 called previous mouse position to track the last known position of our mouse. Then in the void update, we'll say that when we press the left mouse button, not when we hold it, this distinction is very important, we'll come back to that in a moment, the last known mouse position where we started rotating the object will be the current mouse position. Now, each time we click, we know the last mouse position. We can then compare this value to the current mouse position as we hold the click to rotate the object and apply that difference in the 3D space. So next, let's check for the mouse input again to see if the left button is still being held. At this point, we'll calculate the delta mouse position, which is the difference between the current mouse position and the previous one. Based on this delta, we'll create the rotation and apply it right afterward. The rotation will be applied on two axes, X and Y, which you're probably already familiar with. 
for the x rotation will base it on the y attribute of the delta. This can be quite confusing. So why are we doing that? Well, because the x-axis rotation is horizontal. And if you're rotating an object clockwise, it is actually the y-axis that changes. So even though we are applying this to the x-axis, it's calculated using the y-axis. And we'll do the exact opposite for the other axis. I hope this is clear. So let's multiply this by the rotation speed we defined earlier and time dot delta time to keep the rotation smooth over time. For the y-axis rotation, it's the same process, except that we use the negative of the delta x value to make the movement feel more natural. If you're not sure why we use the negative value here, I suggest that you test the script later on with a positive value and you'll quickly understand. Now that we've calculated our rotation, we just need to apply them. So we can create a variable of type quaternion, which handles rotations in Unity. Let's call it rotation. Then we'll use quaternion.euler to create the actual rotation based on our x and y values. z is set to zero since we don't need it. Finally, we can apply this rotation to our object to inspect by multiplying it with its current rotation. Since we'll be holding the left mouse button, we need to update the previous mouse position with the current mouse position after every frame. So just like we did earlier, but now after the object has moved. And our system should now be ready. So you can save this script, go back to Unity, and fill the variables. So you have to drag the object to inspect into the appropriate field, and you can press play. Now, if I move my mouse without holding the left button, nothing happens. But if I hold the left button and move the mouse left, right, up, or down, the object rotates and I can inspect it from all angles. This works with all type of objects and this simple system can be easily extended. Here is an example on screen where I've integrated it into a first person character. I can walk up to an object, a message appears on the screen and if I press a button, the object can now be rotated in front of the camera. I can also close the inspection when I'm done and just walk away. And that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it, I hope you learned something new, and if you did, feel free to leave a comment and a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want more tutorials. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you guys later.